Hey and welcome back and in today's video we'll try and see how we can transform our C400 for a full frame camera into an LF camera. I don't know whether it will be successful but here's the gist of it. The gist of it is we get to take C400 that has the RF mount, take the speed booster right that's from the C70 that was released around the C7 then couple that together. If we did transform the Super 35 into the full frame well if we put it on the full frame do we get to get an LF? And if we do, do we have the lens coverage that supports it? So in some of that um, vein, I do have like the Canon CNE glass and I'll be putting that out to that because they all have EF mount and we get to see what happens. You get if there's going to be vignetting, if we get, obviously we're going to get um, a stop of light more based on the fact that it's going to also be like a focal reducer to be able to maybe convert our lenses from a longer focal length to a wider focal length, which is generally how um, um, the, some of the characteristics that you get from an LF, you get when you put a longer lens on a large format like a 85 or, or 135 it begins to look like a 50 but some of the benefits from having such kind of compression because it gives to um, shallow depth of field more light like wild wild um, not wild but wide field of view and also gives a lot of separation in terms of reduces the distortion that's available on the face so some of these characteristics as are what we're going to like test and check for and see how it plays even the bokeh of the lens when we open it wide open how does it now look you get and if we could actually um, craft out a new look by using that mode to be able to get something interesting out of the camera so all of these things uh things we would be examining in this video today so right now we're gonna like smash cut to the test and just watch them um, which will be generally the um the full frame actually yes the full frame which is like the c400 native right against the same c400 but this time with the speed booster that hopefully would give us the lf and what we can get out of it and yeah we get to see it and we get to discuss my thoughts over the footage so now we're smashing cut to that okay so this is the canon with the um, 14mm standard cne glass on it and we can see how it pushes back the background. We're using the base, um, second base ISO of T200 on it, and shooting while shooting on the native, that's making it like two stop on there. But now with the speed booster, um, apparently our guess is correct. We've gained uh, one more stop of light, so it's now reading at 2.2, but our field of view has widened, but we now have this vignette, which means the circle of glass of the rear element of this glass does not cover it. Now, the same thing happens on the 24 we had like one four um take note of the bokers how they look we can see some slight ca uh which you can see here when i actually shoot them out of focus with the green um, um aberrations around the edges but now the 24 is now reading a 17 millimeter and i kind of like this look how it actually looks at the 17 but now at the t 1.0 and i don't know if you can compare if you scroll back to the last one but the ca is not as hard as the first one if you go to the 35 now, right, reading at 1.4, still at um, 200 base, right, most of these lights are less than like 7%, they're not up to 10, right, we take a look, take note of this bokeh aberrations. Now, when you go to the 35, on the booster, it becomes a 25, <laughs> an interesting focal length that Canon has never made, which I kind of like. <laughs> And the bokeh gets like cleaned up a little bit with the aberrations on the green edges of, uh, of what's around it and there's like more separation. Uh, same thing across a bunch of focal lengths but it's more looking like a visual new language at least the way I see it from the way it renders the texture um, with the speed booster when I look at the textured um, background and how everything actually like now behaves because 50 becomes like a 36 and it's like this kind of swell as you go up in the focal length and you can see we're now like in the 0 0.9 territory this is like a lens that used to be very expensive they call it like a canon dream lens but like, we're kind of in that territory now using the speed booster to be able to harness that kind of look there's definitely a swellness and it seems like the 85 is the one that covers it the best without the vignette and it fact now becomes like a 60 you can definitely see the swells at the 0 0.9 or wild open i mean when it's fully open in terms of the aperture um and yes you can see the bokeh how they become more curved around the edges 
It's, I don't know, it feels more sharp at the center, but it has a bit most of that coverture. I don't speak too boldly and say it, it, it mimics certain qualities of the um, Enzo characters that always affect the bokeh at the edges and makes it sharp, like um, the center sharp. But yeah, it's kind of looking like that. But I don't know what glass could cover and give us wide, wider coverage, but this seems to be what we got from the test. What do you think about it? So we've seen the whole footage and we've seen most of the test and we've seen um, how this could be a tool. Some of you may like it, some of you may hate it, but it's just another tool in the arsenal of storytelling you get. So how we use it at the end of the day brings out the true uniqueness of whether it's a tool for us or whether it's just a gimmick you get. But in the end, that choice is left to you. And if you found any of this research or craziness useful, um, please like and subscribe for more content like this as we just explore logical applications and whatever comes to mind and have like interesting conversation. So um, until next time when I see you, please improvise, adapt and overcome. Thank you.